I'm Jerry Gordon, a senior editor here at the New English Review. We're here with Mark Signorelli, and we're going to talk about your presentation. Mark, can you give us sort of a summary of what you discussed here today at the New English Review Symposium? Sure. Uh, my basic thesis is that the relativism that is pervasive uh, in the modern West has roots in the ascension of science and scientific methodology to a status of, of what I refer to as unique truthfulness. Um, since the, the 17th century, science and its, its influence has become only uh, more influential and, and more widespread in the Western world uh, and more uh, has stamped itself with, with greater, uh, greater influence on habits of thought in, in the West. Um, that has led to the situation I think we're in today where Western man sort of considers science and scientific conclusions to be somehow more true than other sorts of conclusions. There's sort of two classifications of propositions. Those that are scientific, i.e. true, and everything else, which is somehow less true. Uh, and I tried to, to trace back that preconception, uh, which I, I believe it is now a, a preconception, to the, the origins of the scientific revolution in, in the 17th century, uh, to figures like Galileo and, and Newton, uh, who did believe that their, uh, their conclusions were more certain than the conclusions drawn by, for instance, the scholastic theologians, the scholastic philosophers. That was the, the constant contrast they were making between their work and the work of the scholastics. And the reason why they, they thought that their, their conclusions were more certain, uh, that they could say that with confidence, was because they were able to produce mathematical demonstrations of their ideas, uh, that they could say things about nature through mathematics. Um, and, and this gave them a, a, a confidence to say that, uh, that their conclusions were, were more certain. Right? Mathematical equations do give us a certain measure uh, of certainty. So it, this, was, this is, to my mind, the only legitimate grounds for that claim that science is somehow more true because it's more certain. It, because it provides those mathematical demonstrations. Now, the fact is, in order to provide those mathematical demonstrations uh, of nature, you simply have to leave out a lot, and particularly you have to leave out human experience. You have to leave out you know, what, uh, human consciousness. This is why you know, in modern materialist thought, a consciousness always gets dismissed as something illusory, as something uh, epiphenomenal, not something fundamental. Uh, so the, this, this habit of, um, of seeking mathematical demonstrations of nature has, has um, only gained momentum in, in, the, in the modern world. For instance, modern biology, Darwinian biology, contemporary Darwinian biology is mathematical biology. Uh, so this has simply, simply been a, a habit uh, of thought. Uh, and, and the point I wanted to make was that if one ascribes to this way of thinking, if, if one buys a proposition that, yes, that certainty is the lone criteria of truthfulness and that science is, is the lone provider of that certainty, then one inevitably, logically, uh, finds oneself embracing a kind of relativistic uh, perspective on ethics, on politics, on, on theology. Right? If the only thing that can be true is what's scientifically verified, well, certainly you know, ethical and, and, and aesthetic uh, statements cannot be verified in that way because they can't be reduced to, to mathematical demonstration. And so one inevitably sort of, uh, assigns a, a status of relative, relative or subjective to those kinds of uh, propositions. So the, the, the point I wanted to make was, and I think the, the point that has uh, been made many times before, is that a great deal of the, the, the problems with contemporary Western civilization uh, can be traced to this sort of relativistic attitude, that everything is up for grabs, all value judgments are equal, that uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the believer in the traditions of, of American constitutionalism has no real grounds uh, for justifying those beliefs. Uh, and and this, this is obviously a significant problem. And when, the point I want to make, my, the, the thesis of my talk, was that that relativism itself has its roots in this, this notion, this, this very pervasive notion, that it is in fact, science, which alone is true, which provides the supreme version uh, of the truth. Um, that is, that is the, the root of the, the problem. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you very much.